I'm down, so let me know. Cool. I will. I've, I've got, this would be really cool because I have a student um, from Colombia that's learning English with me and he's super into riding bikes. Oh, so, well, good. We'll just make a group of it. I've been telling him for a long time. Uh, you know, he just moved here from Colombia, so he's not set up very well. He doesn't have a bike. I'm like, man, go on to Facebook, buy a bike for a hundred bucks and let's go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think we've got an extra one too. It's not that great, but it will get you down the mountain. Sweet. We should do that. And then we can practice English and Spanish all at the same yes, time. Yes. Perfect. I like it. Nice. Bien. Well, let's, vamos a comenzar. So let's review some of the vocab from uh, the Salon de Clase. Como se dice el, uh, pencil? Uh, lapis. And since we learned the articles in the last class, you can add that here. El lapis. The pencil. El, Como se dice uh, el pen? El bolígrafo. Uh, el marcador. El libro. Uh, el papel. Uh, el pizarra. All right, so that's why we do this, right? La pizarra. La pizarra. Remember that feminine. It ends with A, so it's feminine. Muy bien. Vamos a repasar las compras. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuesta el lápiz? El lápiz cuesta 10 centavos. Bien. ¿Cuánto cuesta el papel? El papel cuesta 2 dólares. Mm. Huevo. Llevo. Llevo el papel y la, el lapis. I have to laugh, laugh a little bit because you said that the other day too. Huevo means egg. Oh. <laughs> so you don't want to egg the paper, right? You want to take no. the paper. Llevo with the Y. Llevo. <laughs> Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Muy bien. Uh, entonces, necesitas comprar el lápiz y el libro. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuesta el lápiz? El lápiz cuesta 10 centavos. Mm, bien, ¿cuánto cuesta el libro? El libro cuesta 9 dólares. Mm. Llevo el lápiz y el libro. Gracias, chao. Nos vemos. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuesta el marcador? El marcador cuesta tres dólares. Bien, ¿cuánto cuesta la pizarra? La pizarra cuesta diez dólares. Mm. Llevo el marcador y uh, la pizarra. Gracias, chao. Nos vemos. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuesta uh, el bolígrafo? El bolígrafo cuesta un dólar. Bien, ¿cuánto cuesta el papel? El papel cuesta dos dólares. Mm. Llevo el bolígrafo y el papel. Gracias, chao. Nos vemos. Ok, muy bien. Now, up until this point, we've been talking about like classroom supplies, like thinking if you're going to Spanish class, you need to buy these things. More than likely, if you ever get on a plane and head down to Mexico, that's not what you're buying, right? These are some things that you might be buying. So here, I'd like to invite you to ask me, como se dice with these items? Como se dice chickles? That, that is the word. And so you would ask me, how do you say gum? Como se dice gum? Um, say los chicles. Okay. Como se dice gum, los chicles. Como se dice water bottle? Mm -hmm. La botella de agua. Agua. Botella being bottle? Mm -hmm. Exacto. Okay. Como se dice soda? How can I help? Se dice el refresco. Como se dice... I'm sorry. Beer. Yeah, that's the one everybody knows, la cerveza. Como se dice... Chips. Las papitas. Como se dice candy. Los caramelos. Mm, okay. los Muy bien. 
So let's review these words now in more of a practical situation of buying something when you go to Mexico. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuestan uh, el chicle? Los chicles. Los chicles. Los chicles cuestan tres dólares. Bien, ¿cuánto cuesta el botella de agua? La botella. La botella. So ask me with la botella. Uh, bien, ¿cuánto cuesta la botella de agua? La botella de agua cuesta dos dólares. Llevo los chicles y la botella de agua. Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Muy bien. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuestan um, el caram caramelos? Mm -hmm. Los caramelos, because it's plural. Los caramelos. Los caramelos cuestan siete dólares. Bien, ¿cuánto cuesta la refresca? El refresco. El refresco. El refresco cuesta cuatro dólares. Llevo los caramelos el y el refresco. Gracias, chao. Nos vemos. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Cuánto cuesta el cerveza? La cerveza. La cerveza. La cerveza cuesta seis dólares. Bien, ¿cuánto cuestan las papitas? Las papitas. Las papitas cuestan uh, cinco dólares. Llevo la cerveza y las papitas. Gracias. Chao. Nos vemos. Ok, muy bien. All right, talking about things uh, that we like, it's also a good idea to add a little more detail with things you prefer, right? So I could say something like, Alex, ¿te gusta la motocicleta? No, no me gusta. Ok. Entonces, ¿prefieres el carro o la motocicleta? Mm, me gusta más el carro. Carro. El carro. 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 There you go. Muy bien. ¿Te gusta el verano? So these are the stations of the year, las cuatro estaciones. Verano is summer, otoño is fall, invierno is winter, and then la primavera supposedly oh. is, is spring right now. So pre, prefiero otoño. Mm -hmm. So first, my first question is, ¿te gusta el verano? Do you like summer? Mm, oh, sí, me gusta. Okay, ahora, ¿qué estación prefieres? Mm. Prefiero Antonio. Antonio. El otoño. El otoño. Muy bien. Would spring be la? Exacto, primavera? muy bien. Uh -huh. La primavera. El verano, el otoño, el invierno, la primavera. Sí. ¿Te gusta la música salsa? Mm, sí, me gusta. ¿Qué música prefieres? Prefiero salsa. ¿Te gusta leer? Mm, sí, me gusta. ¿Qué tipo de libro prefieres? Prefiero misterio. Okay. Now, gustar works a little bit differently than every other verb in the Spanish language. If you want to talk about multiple things that you like, you change it from me gusta to me gustan. For example, me gustan las clases de español. Mm. Sí, me gusta. Me gustan with an N on the end. Ah, uh, sí, me gusta. Because las clases are plural. Can you read these next two examples to me? 
me gustan los par partidos de fútbol. And then the last one. Me gustan los tacos. Perfecto. All right. If I want to say you like things, I say te gustan. Can you read these examples to me? Te gustan los clases de español. Te gustan los par partidos de fútbol. Te gustan los tacos. Perfecto. Okay, entonces, if you want to ask a question, you just change it to an inquisitive tone in your voice. Te gustan? For example, Alex, te gustan los tacos? Sí, me gustan los tacos. Okay, so what would be correct? Me gusta or me gustan el tigre? Me gusta el tigre. Me gustan los perros. Perros. Mm -hmm. uh, me gustan los gatos. Me gusta el pajaro. Uh, me gusta el pez. Me gustan los cab Cabellos. 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 Uh, me gustan los tacos. Uh, me gusta la cerveza. Me gusta el mojito. Uh, me gusta el vino. Vino. Me gustan los refrescos. ¿Te gusta la pizza? Mm, sí, me, me gusta la, la pizza. ¿Te gustan los animales? Mm, sí, me gustan los animales. Los ¿Te gustan anim las películas cómicas? Mm, sí. Me gusta... Me gustan... Me gustan uh, películas com cómicas. Com cómicas. Cómicos, cómicos. Mm -hmm. ¿Te gusta la música de Celia Cruz? Mm, sí, me gusta la música de Celia Cruz. ¿Cuál es tu actividad favorita? Mm, um, me gusta Actividad favorita. So here you could either say mi actividad favorita es or just me gusta plus the activity. You don't oh. to combine those two. Okay, so me gusta leer. ¿Cuál es tu animal favorito? Mm. Me gusta a gato. ¿Te gusta el qué? ¿El gato? El gato. El gato, muy bien. ¿Cuál es tu país favorito? Mm. El... El eh, Italia. Uh, Italia, Italia, muy bien. ¿Cuál es tu música favorita? No, no, say, say, so, so, don't have a favorite, no preference. Uh, no tengo, no, no tengo, tengo. okay, muy bien. All right, moving on along, a little grammar check in here. Uh, adjectives are descriptive words that help us add a little more detail to conversation. Uh, however, there's a lot that you have to understand about adjectives in Spanish. First and foremost, they're typically backwards in Spanish. We put the adjective before the word it describes. In Spanish, it comes after the word it describes, right? So we would say he is a short boy. What that means is you really have to say he is a boy short in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Él es un niño bajo. Él es un niño bajo. All right. Adjectives have to match the noun they describe in number and gender. So on the left, we have el niño bajo. 
On the right, we have La Nina Baja. El Nino Bajo, La Nina Baja. Right? So typically speaking, we change the O to an A, right? Nino Nina Bajo Baja. We also have to change the article, El to La. Mm -hmm. Now, El. if it ends with an E, it doesn't typically change. Uh, most words that end with E would be considered kind of neutral words, right? Like here we have el carro grande y la motocicleta grande. So carro is masculine, motocicleta is feminine, but grande is grande. It doesn't change. Uh, if I wanted to say the tall men, I have to make everything plural, right? So el hombre alto would be the tall man. Los hombres altos would be the tall men, right? La flor azul, las flores azules. Remember, if it ends with a consonant, we need to add ES to the word and to the adjective. Okay. So let's practice. Uh, how could you say, for example, here, the tall dog and the, uh, not the tall dog, the big dog and the small dog? El perro grande, el perro... El perro. Chico. Chico. Chico is small. Okay. So now, how do you say the big dogs? Um, los perros grande. Muy bien. And then the small dogs? Mm, los perros chicos. Perfecto. All right. The small apple and the big apple. La manzana grande, um, la manzana chico, la manzana. So, so uh, careful, grande. careful, manzana is feminine, so you have to do something to chico. La manzana chica. Uh, and la manzana grande. Yes. Yeah, grande doesn't change. Good. La manzana grande. So you need las, to plural. Mm -hmm. las, manzana, las manzanas grande. Grandes. Grandes. So you add S to grande too, right? Mm. La manzana. Tres. Las manzana chicas. You don't need to say tres. Uh, we're just trying to say the small apple. So la, la manzana chica. Las manzanas chicas. There were more than. Because it's plural. There's more than one, right? Mm, el gato blanca. You could say el gato blanco. Here we're looking for beautiful and ugly. <laughs> mm. uh, beautiful. What is, what is that word, beautiful? Uh, beautiful. So ask me, como se dice? Como se dice beautiful. I'll never be mad at you if you're asking me, como se dice, okay? Uh, beautiful se dice bonito. Bonito. So el gato bonito. Como se dice ugly? Feo. Um, el gato bail. Plural? Um, el gato bonito. So, los gatos bonitos. Uh, el gato feo. So, los gatos feos. El carro. Hmm. We're looking for new and old. We just did this yesterday. Uh, Como se dice new? Nuevo. Hmm. El carro nuevo, uh, el carro 
¿Cómo se dice old? Viejo. Viejo. El carro viejo. Hmm. El carro nuevo. So, so remember, you have to change oh. L to plural too. Los carros nuevos. Ahí está. Los carros viejos. ¿Cómo se dice expensive? Caro. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice uh, cheap? Barato. El reloj. El reloj. Reloj. Relo. You don't pronounce Relo. the J. Yeah. Relo. El relo caro. El relo barato. El. Hmm, los relos caro. Relojes. Relojes caros. Muy bien. Uh, los relojes baratos. El hombre, ¿cómo se dice rich? Uh, rich is rico. Um, ¿Cómo se dice poor? Uh, pobre. El hombre rico, el hombre pobre. Pobre. Mm -hmm. Lo, los hombres ricos. Um, los hombres pobres. Uh, la estudiante. We're looking for good and bad. Bien. Bien in the, in the sense of like how you're doing, but here we're looking for buena. Buena. Como se dice bad? Mala. In this situation, Mala. because they're female, right? La estudiante buena, la estudiante mala. If it was boy student, bueno, la, la, mm -hmm. el estudiante bueno. See? And el estudiante malo. Exacto. Muy bien, yeah. El estudiante, el estudiante bueno, so los estudiantes buenos. Um, los estudiantes malos. Bien, vamos a conversar un poco, Alex. Uh, in tu opinión, la playa es bonita? Sí. Me gusta la... Have I ever been... ¿Prefieres la playa o las montañas? Las montañas. Muy bien. Por eso vives en Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Los medios sociales son divertidos? Sí, ya, yeah, sí. ¿Cuál es tu aplicación favorita? Mm. Mi fav favorita uh, Instagram. Ok, muy bien. ¿La cerveza es buena? The sí. language school is on Instagram, by the way, so you can look us up. Oh, okay. muy bien. ¿La cerveza es buena? Uh, sí. Uh, ¿Te gusta más el vino o la cerveza? Ah, uh, el vino. ¿La comida de servicio rápido es mala? Mm, sí. ¿Qué tipo te gusta? Sí, me gusta. Uh, ¿Qué tipo no te gusta? Mm. No. So I'm asking, no, no, no. So like, the first question was, is fast food bad? And you said, yeah, it's bad. 
It but is. Then you said, I like it, right? Now I my question like is, what, what type do you dislike? What, what type do you not like? Um, like McDonald's or Taco Bell or, you know. Um, yeah, How would I put that in a sentence? No me gusta. Oh, uh, no me gusta McDonald's. Okay. La ciudad de Denver es vieja. Mm. Que significa ciudad. Ciudad means city. So is mm. the city of Denver old? Sí. ¿Cuál es tu ciudad favorita? Oh, Denver. Okay, muy bien. Zoe Saldaña es fea. Mm, ¿Qué significa fea? Ugly. Is she ugly? Oh, uh, no. ¿Quién es tu actriz favorita o actor favorito? Um, me gusta Jodie Comer. I have no idea who that is. <laughs> oh, you're missing out. What's she in? Uh, Killing Eve, The Last Duel, Free Guy. No, I live under a rock. <laughs> okay. Los, los dibujos animados son populares. ¿Qué significa de dibujos? Dibujos animados, cartoons. Oh, sí. Sí, son populares, muy bien. ¿Te gustan los dibujos animados? Sí, me gustan los di dibujos animados. Muy bien. ¿El vino es rico? Mm. No, depends. So here in this context, we're saying rico as in delicious. Is one oh, delicious? No. <laughs> sí. sí, el vino es rico. ¿Te gusta más el vino tinto o el vino blanco? Mm. Me gusta el vino tinto. Muy bien. All right, a few new verbs for you. Uh, this, this is what we're going to work on going forward is our verbs. To truly become conversational, this is what we need to learn. So, repite. Ordenar. Ordenar. Tomar. Tomar. Reservar. Reservar. Good. Rolling of the R right there. Nice. Desear. Desear. Beber. Beber. Comer. Comer. Okay, perfecto. Muy bien. We're going to go over uh, the next piece of advice from my book, Five Easy, ugh, Five Easy Steps to Speak Spanish with Confidence. Give me two seconds so I can run to the restroom real quick and I'll be right back, okay? Okay.
So Alex, I think this book is going to be really helpful for you um, because this is going to fill in like the missing pieces, like what you should be doing when you're not in class with me, okay? Yeah. So uh, I believe the other day we talked about uh, the first step, which is to write about your objectives and inspiration. Mm -hmm. Why are you learning Spanish? It's got to be very clear. Um to have conversations with my coworkers and to bring financial planning to Spanish speakers. All right, good. So um, you should elaborate on that a little bit, right? Like it'd be cool to speak Spanish at work. It's essentially what I'm hearing you say, right? But I want you to go a little deeper than that. If you spoke Spanish at work, what would that do for you? Could you make more money? Could you have more clients? Would it make your job easier? I could get... help more people. You can help more people, right? So you have to go deep with this, right? Why are you learning Spanish? Because there's going to come a time where you're going to want to give up. It's something that takes time, right? To learn how to speak a new language takes time. Three to six months, you know, it's like going to the gym. Everybody makes a New Year's resolution in January to lose weight. And by February, They've given up on that, you know, the same thing's going to happen with Spanish. So I always tell my students, you know, you have to have a really solid foundation for why you're learning the language, right? Because anytime you uh, get frustrated, you can go back to your Spanish notebook and look at those reasons. And that saved me. I was about ready to give up when I was living in Spain at one point and, you know, completely frustrated. So only having a very deep understanding of why I wanted to learn how to speak Spanish um, help me get through, you know, the hard times, right? Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to talk about another section you should have in your notebook, which is really powerful. Um, and this is, you should start writing dialogues, okay? So the reason why we, we try to first understand our, why we're learning Spanish is because everything else builds upon this. So you said you wanted to learn, you, you could help more people at work, right? You could have more, you have Spanish speaking clients, it'd be great to build rapport with them. Uh, you can help people understand the markets and stuff like that a little bit better if you spoke Spanish. So think about those real life situations you find yourself in when you're helping your clients. And what do those conversations look like for you? Um, the, the thing about dialogues is that they have to be real, right? I don't want hypothetical conversations. I want real conversations because as long as you're learning Spanish that's relevant to you in the conversations you're currently having with your colleagues and your customers on a daily basis, it's going to make it a whole lot more practical and therefore a whole lot more powerful. And it's going to enable you to speak, start speaking Spanish sooner. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You just have to, you know, initially, you know, my experience with working with Spanish clients is just by simply introducing myself, hola, me llamo David, como estas? Like that builds so much rapport <laughs> with my, with my English speak or my English students that are native Spanish speakers. And so that's where you kind of want to start, right? So this is a little activity I did with one of my students that was uh, learning how to speak English with me for the same reason, right? He wants to be able to speak English at work. He has a company, he does construction and remodeling and stuff like that. And um, he gave me this dialogue in Spanish, right? And so the first step is for you, Alex, to write down a dialogue that you would have with one of your customers right? And think from the beginning, right? What's the first dialogue you, you wish you could have? What's the first conversation you wish you could have with one of your Spanish-speaking clients, right? Right. Here it's, it's, it's in Spanish, so you're going to do it backwards. You're going to write it down in English. Mm -hmm. So write the dialogue down in English. And if you have a, like a notebook like this, right? You want to write one line here, and then give a couple of spaces to write another line down below it. Okay. Okay. 
just like just like what we have here, right? So if our our first line is my my student wanted to say, "Hola, usted habla con Martín con Pike's Peak Construction en qué le puedo servir?" The next line is open because that's where we're going to translate it into the target language, mm. right? So okay. for you, it would be backwards. You would write in English, "Hi, this is Alex with." financial services company one, two, three. <laughs> how can I help you? I mean, I don't know how you would normally answer your phone at work, right? But yeah. try and put yourself um, in the situation, right? Okay, write that down now. Uh, you don't have to do it right now. Okay. But it wouldn't hurt you, you know, if you wanted to do just a brief little dialogue right now, and then I can help you kind of work your way through it, right? So you can see here, we've just got a couple. The, the thing is, it's got to be real and it's got to be an exchange of information because that's what a, a conversation is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, think about like your first introduction with a new client. What would you say? Um, it would be, hi, my name is Alex Truly. I'm the private client advisor for JP Morgan. How can I help you? All right, you're gonna to have to go through that a little bit slower with me. Yep. Hi. My, My name, name is Alex Struey. Alex Struey. I, I am the private client advisor for JP Morgan. How can I help you? So let's go down a couple of lines. What would the customer, let's pretend I'm the customer, David, right? Mm -hmm. What comes up? Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, about extra cash. I have and what to do with it. Okay. Uh, and then I would say, absolutely. I would love to help. I specialize in creating financial plans to help clients achieve their goals. Okay, and then what would be the next exchange here? Um, they would say, that sounds great. When can we schedule a time to meet? So this is the cool thing about this, right? In, unlike a lot of Spanish programs, I'm inviting you to customize this for your specific reasons, right? Because a lot of this, like, I'll be honest with you, there's very little of this vocabulary that I would normally teach in a Spanish class, right? Now, here I get to teach you exactly what you need in order to be successful speaking Spanish at work, right? So uh, we can do some of this together, right? So how would you say, hi, my name is Alex Drury. Hola, me llamo Alex Drury. Now, this one's going to be a little bit hard. Soy. Soy. Uh, so, uh, there's. Give me one second, because I want to look up the right word for this. Okay. Advisor. So advisor can be assessora, but I think in this situation, you want to say a consajera. And I just want to confirm that that's the right. No, it's not tutor. Come on, Google, really? Yeah. This, is, this is the other thing. Like, it's helpful for you to bring this stuff with me to make consejero, consejero. I couldn't remember if it had an A 
or uh, or started with a C. Con se hera de clientes privados, privados para JP Morgan. Do you know how to say, how can I help you? We've seen it in the dialogues for shopping. Mm. No, we haven't seen it yet. We don't see that until we order food in the restaurant, which is the next class. Okay. In que le puedo servir. So that's like, you could say servir or ayudar. So ayudar is a direct translation to help you. However, cu culturally speaking, I would say Spanish speakers typically say, en que le puedo servir. En que le puedo servir. Mm -hmm. Which is like, how can I serve you today? Truly oh. putting yourself into the position of service, right? So again, hola, me llamo David. Mm -hmm. Ahora, ¿cómo se dice I have? Yo tengo. And yo most of you would leave off the yo. Tengo unas preguntas acerca del efectivo que tengo. Y qué hacer con este dinero. So not everything translates 100%. So you're saying some of it does, right? Hi, my name's David. I have some questions. Tengo unas preguntas. I have some questions. I have a few questions. Acerca in the situation is like saying about. Acerca del efectivo. Efectivo is cash. Uh, okay. Efectivo is cash. So I don't know, like, and this is the fun part about doing these. Is the person really saying like, hey, I've got 50 grand in cash on me? Or is he saying that I've got liquid 50 grand, right? He's, he's got liquid 50 grand. So I would probably say dinero here. Mm. Del dinero que because tengo. Efect efectivo literally means cash. Like if you go to the store, do you want to pay in cash or credit, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're just talking about money in general, so let's just change this a little bit. Say about extra money I have. Mm -hmm. And so now we're saying acerca del dinero extra que tengo y que hacer con este dinero and what to do with this money. Oh, uh, okay. Y que hacer con este dinero. Okay. Right? Right. Uh, so you said absolutely, I would say in Spanish, they don't use that word a whole lot. I would say more like claro, which is like saying of course or clearly. Mm -hmm. Claro. Okay. Ah, I would love, I love this. Okay, great. So you're going to say, me encantaría ayudar. Ayudar? Mm -hmm. So like we've, we've learned me gusta, right? Mm -hmm which is directly saying, I like. So we've got the same thing here with me encanta, which is now saying, I love. Oh. In the sense that you are you really like doing something, right? Like obviously you're not gonna marry helping somebody and fall in love, and like, right? So me encanta is when you love something that's not a person. Mm, okay. Now, this ia that we're throwing on the end is the conditional would. So that corresponds with this word would. 
in English, right? And honestly, this is something that you typically won't learn until a very advanced level of Spanish, but there's no reason why you can't learn it now. You throw ia onto the end of a verb to say would, right? Mm, okay. So here you're saying, me encantaría ayudar. Me encantaría ayudar. Give me one second here, because I want to make sure I'm giving you the right one. All right, so especializo, I specialize in crear planes financieros, like we just talked about, adjectives come after. So I specialize in creating financial plans mm -hmm. to help clients succeed, lograr is like to see, succeed or to achieve their goals, metas. Oh. Does. Right. Now we come down to the last one. And the person's going to say, we've already heard this one before in the introduction. Me parece bien. Mm. Now, to make it a little colorful, because in English you said great, we're just going to say muy bien. Mm, muy bien. Add a little extra to it. And if this is a, a question, we're going to say, ¿Para cuándo podemos programar una reunión? Taekwondo is like saying for when with a with an end date in mind. When can we schedule a time to meet? Programar sounds like program. Mm -hmm. That's to schedule. Para cuando podemos programar una reunión? Reunión, which is up to meet. To a meeting, a reunion. Yeah, a meeting. Exactly. Okay. So, um. I would recommend taking a screenshot of this. I did. Okay, perfect. Do you got the full one? Uh, let me verify that's a good. Yes, I have the full one. All right, so let's back it up a little bit, right? Easy step number one is all talking about uh, writing about why you're learning Spanish to truly mm -hmm. understand why you're learning Spanish and what you can do with Spanish in the future. We determined that it's primarily for work, right? You wanna help more clients at work that happen to be Spanish speakers. So from that, we take our first dialogue and we start with the beginning. What's the first thing that you would say to your customers at work? And here it is. Now, as you notice with this type of activity, not everything translates 100%. So I always want you to bring it to me. If you do a dialogue like this, bring it to me to make sure that we're getting it right. Okay. And then even as a caveat here, I'm going to throw in, obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not the world that I work in. So I'm just doing the best with my Spanish abilities. And, you know, my knowledge of what you're talking about, if you have a Spanish speaking colleague that you work with that currently does this, bounce this off of him or her, just to make sure, because there might be specific terminology 
uh, that that they're using that I might not be using here, right? Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just found a found a typo. Come on, computer. There we go. It's not priabados, it's pribados. Pribados. Take a new screenshot to make sure you get the right one. Okay, and then I will highlight the word so that I know that this is the right one. All right, great. And save the photos. Okay. All right, so you got that right? So this is the fun part about you know language and interpretation and translation and stuff like that. Even though I'm fully bilingual in Spanish, we're using a lot of kind of uh, highly, highly relevant vocabulary to the financial services world. So it'd be a good idea to bounce this off of somebody that that actually has these conversations on a daily basis, right? Okay. All right. So. We've done the dialogue. Um, this is something that you can add to your little bag of tricks. You don't have to do it every day, but I would say like once a week, try and do a dialogue like this and then bring it to me, right? Okay. So I'm, I'm teaching you the generalized Spanish that you have to learn one way or the other. However, what you've just mentioned to me, your primary goal is to speak Spanish at work, which we can accelerate that goal by doing this type of activity. Okay. Right. And in the future, we'll see how we can kind of start extracting certain vocabulary lists. So like if we go. Hmm. So if we go back here, right. As you can see here, this is financial services, right? Mm -hmm. So we, 